Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. I want to go over this quite a cool technique here. And it, it all stemmed from a question on the Enterprise DNA support forum where someone needed to normalize their data. They know they, they had a, a bunch of sales and, and, and some sales uh, sat on, uh, and they were across different countries, and some sales sat on public holidays um, in, uh, in one country uh, but not in another. And the, from, for reporting purposes, what they wanted to do was they wanted to aggregate all of these different sales and then be able to place them uh, or, or, or bring them back to the reporting country, but have them only reported on, on actual working days in the reporting country. So really interesting concept, right? And the key to it, the key to it, and the key I want to go over today is how can you, how can you write some logic in your formula to change the position of a reporting day, right, or, or 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 the result on a particular day. So let's just have a look through this table. So let's just drill into um, and work through the example. And I, and I think you're going to find it quite interesting how how this is actually solved. And and if you are working with something similar where you have to actually move results from one day to another day, this is how you can apply it, or how you can apply some logic to do it. So what we've done is, um, and, and to simplify it, so I recreated um, how you would do it. What, what I have done is I have worked out logic uh, where I have moved, I have moved sale data. So if we look down this column here, we've got total sales, which is a pretty simple calculation to do this, all, or do this one all the time. What I have done is I've said, okay, if a sale sits on Saturday or Sunday, I actually want that to be pushed to a Monday. So I want it to actually be registered uh, in only working days, so Monday through to Friday, and that's for every single week. And I also want it to be dynamic, so when I change the time frame, it always updates, so um, the weekend numbers always land on the Monday. And then on top of that, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, wanted to then uh, branch out into some other calculations like cumulative totals and so on, and uh, you know, could, could be moving averages, etc. And so by doing um, by doing this, you have to rearrange things slightly uh, when you go into some DAX combinations uh, to to solve you know, very specific or showcase uh, these insights in a specific way. So I'm going to show you how, how I did that one as well. Okay, so let's walk through the logic. So so what I've done is I've, I've set up a calculation called total sales non weekend days. Okay, and there's a couple of things I need to do to solve it, and let's just jump into here first of all, okay? So let's just have a look at these variables. I've set up a couple of variables here. I've said a weekend check and a workday check, okay? And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, I want to understand if in, in a particular context I am in a weekend, I am in the weekend, and I also want to understand, okay, which ones which days are Mondays, okay? Now let's have a look at these. If I just, I'm gonna to jump to the date table in a second. What I did is I created this date type column. So if I just jump to the date table, so you see here, I created a date type column and it's pretty simple logic. All I've done is I've used the day in week, which was already in my date table. And I said, well, if it isn't, if it isn't, uh, say Saturday or Sunday, I wanna call it a work day. If not, I wanna call it a weekend. And you'll see that day and week for Saturday is six and day and week for Sunday is zero. So that's just that logic there. So then what I did was I said, okay, well, if the weekend check is true, and what's really cool is that you can actually put true and false statements in variables here, which is another really, really cool technique. It really simplifies um, your ultimate formula under the return. And so what I've done is I said, okay, check to see if it is a weekend. If it is a weekend, then make that result equal to blank. And so you see here, Saturday, Sunday, blank, blank. Saturday, Sunday, blank, blank. Then I check if workday check equals to false. So if this selected value equals Monday is false. So basically if it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then I just want to equal total sales. So I just want to equal this amount here. So you see Tuesday, is perfectly reflected there, Wednesday reflected there, so on and so forth. Now, if workday check equals true, so if it is Monday, then we're going to run this logic here. Okay, and so this is where just using a combination of calculate and filter, you can uh, you can rearrange things. And so what I've done is I said I want to calculate total sales for Mondays, but I also want to calculate 
the weekend amounts as well. And so by going all dates, I remove any context and I say, okay, well, if the date is, is greater than the current date minus three, so if it's greater than say the Friday before, and it's less than or equal to the current date, and so we're just looking at Monday here, then calculate up total sales. And so by implementing this logic, what we probably could do is we could actually put this down to another line here. By implementing this logic, what I'm doing is I'm moving the total sales from Saturday and Sunday, and I'm moving them into Monday. So you see how I've used a combination of little techniques here. Obviously I've used if statements, and then I've broken out, um, I've tried to isolate particular days and, and said, okay, if we are in this case on a Monday, I wanna then go and find data from previous days, and I've opened up those previous days here and bring them into that particular day. And that's how we can normalize these um, or normalize amounts or, or, or sales figures based on uh, you know, what, what, what day they land on. So this is, this is, the, this is the logic which solved that specific, um, that specific request in the support forum. Um, and uh, then there were, if, you, if you're working with say holidays or something like that, you might need to slightly change this up again. You might need another sort of check in here that checks for a holiday um, and you might have to create a holiday weekend, but that's it's a similar sort of logic that you can apply. Now, the other thing I want to do is I wanted to create a cumulative total. I wanted to create a cumulative total of this amount now, instead of say the total sales, I actually want it to uh, calculate a cumulative total of this. So the weekend is always going to flatline, if you think about it, because there is actually no data. So you see here, we've got flat lines at flat lines on this weekend, a flat line on this weekend, and it's also dynamic. So it was always gonna start from, um, start from the very first day in the current selection that we have. And you see here, I've created a visualization which actually comparing, the, comparing this one to this one. But let's have a look how I did this. This is another quite interesting technique. Uh, that you can utilize in uh, a number of different ways. But what I've done is I've tried to create a table. I've created a table here. I've just called it the adjusted table. Probably, I probably should call it the adjusted sales table actually. And what I've done is I've recreated basically with a summarize, I've recreated this, just these two columns in, in this particular table. I've recreated the date column and I've recreated this particular column here, the total sales, non-weekend days. And what I've done is I've placed this inside a SUMX and I've placed this table inside a filter. And so what the filter is doing is it's doing similar to what you would see in a, a standard cumulative um, total formula. But instead of going all dates, what I've done is I've created a, a much different table, a, a table that looks a lot different where I've gone all dates, but then I've um, instead of having total sales, I've placed this adjusted total sales, total sales non-weekend days. And then um, via uh, SUMX, which is really cool, is that we can then go and count up columns or count up columns that we place into our virtual table. It's pretty amazing, right? So we, we, we're, what we're doing is we're iterating through every single day here. We're working out, is the date less than or we get to the max date? And then we're, um, if it is, then we're going to count up normalized sales. And that's how we get this cumulative total, which normalizes again for the blanks that we put in here. So this is a really cool technique, right? And, and really applicable if you're working across multiple different countries and you want to bring everything back to the reporting country. I think this is a really good application for that. And this is how you can normalize sales across all the different regions um, into, into the home reporting uh, region where you know you want you might want to skip uh, holiday periods or you might want to skip certain days or, or or Christmas day or Easter or something going something like that okay so I'm gonna round off that uh, round off here I think this is a, a quite a unique um, technique which which you might actually find lots of other different ways you can use it I mean there's lots of times where you want to adjust when uh, a result what day a result lands on it might not always be the exact day that um, the date is uh, classified it as you might want to adjust it and this is this is certainly a range of techniques that you can use to to do that Okay, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for listening in, and uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed the content. Um, if you did, certainly throw the video a like. Really appreciate it, and don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of uh, lots of great content coming out on Power BI. Okay, all the best. Talk to you soon.